G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Once again, I'm back. It's been a couple of weeks, been traveling the world, traveling Europe specifically, uh, and today we are back finally to do my very late, uh, what round is it? I need to check, I have been so out of loop. It is round 15. Round 15's uh, predictions, obviously we're in the buy rounds now, so there's less games on. Um, and to be honest, I literally just got back home to uh, Macclesfield this morning. So uh, I've been doing a little bit of catch up on what's been happening. I try my best to follow it on my Kintiki, um, which I will tell you all about in a separate video if you're interested in what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks. But suffice it to say, have not watched any games of football in the last three weeks, but we're going to have a crack at predicting round 15. Now, I'm aware that uh, we're one game in. Geelong have beaten Melbourne. The Cats got up. Ah, I was really close to tipping the Cats, but I ended up going with Melbourne. They had just beaten Collingwood, and I thought the form lines meant that Melbourne should win this game, but Geelong too good at GMHBA, where we know they're always really, really strong. Today, we're going to just kick it off with uh, trying to predict the rest of the round, uh, because why not? Then, over the next few weeks, we'll be get getting back to the usual programming. Drewsy won't be able to do his nine things I learned, because he is uh, traveling the world uh, similar to what I've been up to. Other than that, it's going to be usual programming for uh, the foreseeable future. My tipping has gone to shit. I think I got like two out of seven games last week, like literally two. Uh, and one of them is because I forgot to tip one of the games as well, uh, because I was off doing dumb shit. Before we crack into it, guys, I will uh, shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel who have been very patient with me, having uh, just gone on a sabbatical for a few weeks. Um, and that's manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. Head to the website, you can get 20% off and free shipping on any of their products and they're really good quality products as well. I took the lawnmower 4.0 with me across Europe over the last three to four weeks that I've been away and I was able to get the job done quickly and easily in the hostels, uh, which, you know, in communal showers, it probably wasn't the best thing to do, but oh well. I was able to manscape on the run um, and Manscaped's great products allowed me to get the job done quickly and easily, like I said, and I was able to top up with the cologne uh, each night as well. So level up your own manscaping routine by heading to manscaped.com and like I said, 20% off and free shipping is a great deal and they're really good products so please enjoy so we're going to resume uh using squiggle again for my footy tips this week guys like i said one game in and geelong has uh not upset but they beat melbourne and i got that tip wrong so we're going to kick it off with st kilda versus brisbane which by the time you watch this, um, that game will be pretty close to coming up. So we're going to have a crack anyway. Um, as I said, I'm a little bit out of the loop, so I'm going to have to be looking at some foreign lines here because while I, you know, followed the scores while I was away, um, you know, I kind of forgot them because I've actually watched the games. St Kilda's form has been patchy. Uh, obviously, the last most recent result was a 20-point loss against Richmond, and in that time, uh, in the last three weeks, they also lost to Hawthorne. So we're seeing a genuine dip here from St Kilda. Is it a typical form slump that teams who start a year well often enjoy? throughout the middle of the season or are they doing that thing where last year you know they went eight and three and they dropped off entirely it's a little bit too early to tell and this is a legitimately tough opponent in the Brisbane Lions and you can see this game is fourth versus fifth on the screen there the Saints weren't the only side to lose to the Hawks in the last three weeks uh, obviously the Hawks got the job done over the Lions at the MCG but it was the MCG where the Lions are notoriously inconsistent uh, and that's probably putting it generous they've also lost to the Crows in that time but the Crows are a very good side at the moment so nothing really concerns me on the Brisbane form side of things and they did beat Sydney last week. If you'd asked me four weeks ago who was going to win this game, I would feel confident tipping St Kilda at Marvel Stadium, but uh, I think the way things are going at the moment and the, line, the Lions are just a little bit more reliable, I'd say, on current form as well. So I'm going to tip the Lions here by 15 points. If it was at the MCG, that's where I'd be throwing out my Lions at the MCG line, but I think they'll be fine at Marvel and they'll win this game by 15 points. Then you've got the Sydney Swans and the West Coast Eagles. Uh, and the Eagles are easy to predict this year. The Swans less so, um, and they've been really disappointing. As you can see on the live ladder there, they're in the bottom four. Admittedly with five and eight, which is an absolutely terrible record, but they still find themselves in the bottom four, and the percentage is 98.3, their most recent game with that loss to Brisbane that I just mentioned. But I will have a quick look at their form line in general. The last two losses were against the Lions and the Saints, uh, ironically, the two teams that just played, and then they had wins over Carlton and North before that. Um, in terms of the ins, this is a rare opportunity where I get to see who the ins are. Mills and Heaney coming into the side for the Swans. Uh, that's a big plus to a side that already should have West Coast covered. West Coast get a few soldiers back, and obviously the form of West Coast has been... It's been patchy. Um, obviously, uh, the 122-point loss against the Crows is... Uh, I followed that on the bus 
um, you know, traveling from bloody like Switzerland to Italy or something like that. To be honest, the recipe for that result was always there. You know, we were the worst team in the competition. The Crows have the best forward line in the competition and our defense, which had previously not been too hit by injury, was completely depleted. So all the recipes there were for a horrible result and that's exactly what we got. So, you know, after a bye, I've got this weird optimism again that not that we're gonna win this game, but I feel like hopefully now, Hopefully, and I'm sick of saying this, those you know 100 point losses are behind us. So I think you know there's no doubt that Sydney's going to win this game when you factor in the Eagles haven't beaten Sydney there since like 1999. There's absolutely no doubt Sydney's going to win this game. But I am confident that we will get within seven goals. I'm going to tip Sydney by 42 points. But even as I'm saying that, I realize I just seem so deluded. Then you've got the Dockers and Essendon at Perth Stadium, as is written on the screen there, but Office Stadium, obviously. And uh, the Essendon, they've shot up to fifth. And I've been talking up their praises all season, to be honest. I think we've seen some really good signs from them. I'm confident that this team under Brad Scott is showing some really, really good form and sustainable form at that as well. Fremantle, the one good thing over the last few weeks where West Coast season is going from terrible to worse has been that in a couple of weeks in a row, the Dockers have looked absolutely shocking. They lost to Richmond at home. Admittedly, Richmond's going through this weird purple patch, but then a 70-point loss against the Giants. Regardless of the fact that the Giants are capable, it shows the how far off Fremantle are from the form of last year. And so going into this game, it's very, very hard to have confidence in them. I don't think Essendon is a poor Perth team by any stretch. They've had some good performances there, not always one. They've won four on the trot as well. They beat Richmond, they beat West Coast, not that that counts. Uh, they only beat North by six points, but that was a pretty good game from memory. And then a big win over Carlton last week. And like I said, Fremantle had just come off a purple patch of beating Sydney, Geelong and Melbourne. But the last two weeks have been really alarming in how far they've dropped off. On the positive note for Fremantle, Sean Darcy is back for this game. We know how uh, much of a pivotal player he is, but on the Essendon side of things, Parrish is into the side as well. So I'm going to have to go with my gut here. I think Essendon is going to win this game. I think they are the better side, and Fremantle, as you can see, are ranked 14th currently, or 13th because Sydney's gone up in this prediction. Um, so I'm going to tip the better side here. Of course, Fremantle could win this game in front of a home crowd. I think they're always a chance, uh, but... Essendon is my tip here, and they'll win this game by 24 points. Then we've got Collingwood and Adelaide at the MCG, which should hopefully be an intriguing matchup. Uh, Collingwood, uh, I think, had their second loss of the season against the Ds. I think it was last week. So they've shown that they are not completely invulnerable. You know, they are they're the best team in the competition, in my view, and probably most people's view. But at the same time, a loss was always going to come, and it came against the side that I have been saying I think is the second best team to come in Melbourne. So no real concerns there from a Collingwood point of view. And Adelaide, uh, you know, they they keep taking steps this year and keep showing more and more evidence that they've evolved into a genuine finals quality side and none more so than their 122 point win over West Coast which again you know West Coast are a write-off this year and it's hard to take too much from that but what we did see is a side that has the tools to really put another team to the sword uh, when they're winning the midfield battle which they absolutely did that being said at the MCG Adelaide are a young side they've been a little bit you know less consistent away from home than they are at home which you'd expect they're not quite the finished article yet and that's why I don't really have much faith in them knocking off Collingwood at the G it would would take a pretty uh, lackluster Collingwood performance, I think, to lose this game. And that is no disrespect to Adelaide because I think they were absolutely a finals quality side. But I don't think they have it in them to beat Collingwood this week. And I will say Collingwood win this by a healthy 28 points. And the final game of the round is an intriguing one, I think, between the currently 13th placed uh, Gold Coast Suns and the Hawthorne who sit in third last and this is at uh, Metricon which is now called Heritage Bank Stadium which I only realized a few weeks ago you know four to six weeks ago I would have said Gold Coast uh, comfortably had Hawthorne on quality but I think that is no longer obviously the case when you consider Hawthorne have won three of their last four games while one of them was against uh, West Coast which is one of the worst teams like we've ever seen uh, they've also beaten St Kilda in that time and then most recently beat the Brisbane Lions at the G uh, and also got slapped by Port Adelaide who are you know currently first on the ladder uh, before this video Equally, though, I think we've seen a, a good improvement from Gold Coast around the same time frame who have won uh, three of their last five. Again, one of them is against West Coast, so you just kind of strike that out. But they beat the Crows by 25 points, which is uh, which is a big win, to be honest, with considering how good the Crows are. And then a seven-point win over the Dogs as well. So we're seeing two capable sides here. In my head, actually, going into this, I had this memory that Gold Coast have a knack for beating Hawthorne, but if you click onto the head-to-head -head here, it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of getting form lines. So Hawthorne beat them last year in Tasmania, 
and then uh, Gold Coast won at Darwin, and then Gold Coast beat them at Sydney. So they did win a couple of games in a row there against the Hawks, but they're all kind of at random grounds. The game before that was at Adelaide. When was the last time they even played at Metricon? That was going back to 2017. So I was kind of hoping to see some sort of hint as to how these teams go. Um, admittedly, Gold Coast did win that game uh, by, well, 86 points. Yeah, I actually remember that. But long story short, we kind of just have to predict on uh, current form lines because there's no other patterns really to go off there. I know that Sicily's out with suspension for this game, which is a big blow to the Hawks, but I feel bad tipping against either side here because I think that Gold Coast have proven themselves to win a home game against the side around Hawthorne's quality. And equally, Hawthorne are a pretty red hot team right now. And they're going to be a difficult uh, proposition for most teams other than Port Adelaide, you know, two weeks ago. So my gut feeling here is telling me Hawthorne's going to win. Uh, but there's logically, it is tough to, to separate them, to be honest. If you ignore the latter, um, Hawthorne obviously were a pretty poor side for the first couple of months of the season, but that's no longer the case. I think they've shown real development. So I'm going to tip Hawthorne to win this game by 19 points. So there you have it, guys. That is uh, my round 15 predictions. Again, sorry it's late. Uh, again, I was kind of all dictated by my travel lately. Like I said, I'll fill you in on that if you're interested in another video on this channel. Um, but we look at the ladder now. And uh, again, it's, it's hard to really read too much into that because we are in the middle of the buy rounds. So teams have played uneven amounts of games. But it is interesting to note Carlton in the bottom four there and Fremantle just above them, which is just fantastic. But the one to note there as well is Essendon up there in fifth with nine and five. Um, that's a fantastic effort. So this this potential win against Fremantle here could be crucial to setting up their season. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for coming back, even though I just took a few weeks off. Uh, like I said, the programming will be back to its usual uh, consistency and, you know, the variety of topics that we'll cover. Um, it's back. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching this video. If you could just give it a like, help me in the algorithm because sometimes YouTube doesn't like it when you take a couple of weeks off. Um, so anything you can do for me there. Um, and do check out the sponsors Manscaped because they have been very patient with me. Um, and they are good products. So if you're interested at all, um, it is a good deal and they, they are quality. But that'll do for now, guys. Stay tuned for another video uh, soon where I talk about my trip and then, uh, then we'll go from there. Maybe I'll do a video ranting about how the Eagles lost by 200 points against Sydney. We'll see. Stay tuned for that. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.